Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have <laughs> Fernando with us again. We had recently done a big collaboration with Seven Astrologers Total uh, with Carmina, and we were also there <laughs> in that video, so it was amazing. And today, I requested him that day that to come today and speak on the current motion of Venus, which is now direct in Libra. Many people have been asking me that what will happen and how to see this. And I already made, I think, three videos on Venus direct and retrograde, but it's all over to you now. Welcome to Exotic Astrology and please please share whatever you want to share on Venus. And yes, uh, he, he also has a beautiful channel. So I'll pin the channel in the description and you also do readings, I guess. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, that's all. Please carry on. Stage is all yours. So, Babaji, Thank you very much for inviting me to your channel. It's a pleasure. So we are going to be discussing today the idea of Venus going direct or Shukra Deva. Okay. And, you know, transits are a very integral part of astrology, you know, but people have to realize that transits are just a part of astrology, right? There are many things going on here. And today in this modern YouTube culture and horoscopic culture by a sense, people uh, sometimes uh, take uh, transits out of proportion, right? Transits do not exist alone. They are related to astrological factors that go on on a chart. So you got to realize before we talk about this transit or any video on transits, that transits are secondary always to planetary periods, okay? Or sign periods if you use Sharadasha or other Jamini uh, uh, time uh, techniques. So in a way, Dashas go before transits. If yogas show uh, something in a chart, right? Uh, dashas show when that something is going to express itself and transits confirm or deny, citing uh, one of my uh, astrology teachers. So before we start, you got to realize if there's a good transit for you happening, uh, don't celebrate. If there's a bad transit going on for you, do not feel wary. Okay, there are many things that go on on a chart and you have to evaluate everything holistically. You know, astrology is confluence. You cannot uh, jump to a conclusion mainly for one thing only, like a transit. So, you know, Shukra Deva just went direct on uh, the 17th of November, if I'm not mistaken, in a sidereal Libra. Okay, and it's going to be there for at least one month more until it goes back to yeah, first uh, Jan around that time. First yes. January. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly the dates, but it's right now in Libra. It's near around that time, and then Mercury on the same day it is going to Sagittarius. Exactly, something exactly. Like. And by the way, it went direct almost at the same time Mercury went retrograde, which yeah, is the same day Mercury went retrograde, six, yeah, or seventh, yes. Very interesting. So we had some uh, retrograde Venus issues uh, over only to begin with other Mercury retrograde issues, but that's another topic for another video. But in a way, it is in sidereal Libra or Tula Rashi, and in tropical, it's also in Scorpio. But we're going to concentrate mainly on sidereal Tula Rashi, okay? And before we start, you know, what is Shukra Deva? Let's just review what... Uh, the planet, the graha means, you know, some people might know it, some people don't, but when in doubt, you know, when we practice astrology, what do we do? You know, obviously we have our religious, spiritual, personal practice, but in a way, you know, the technique, we have to go to the classics, you know? And when we study astrology, you know, astrology is an art and a science, but in the technical part, Astrology is a language. And what do you do to improve your language skills? You read, you write, right? But the first thing you do is you learn the letters. You learn uh, the phonetics. You learn the grammar. And in astrology, that is done by learning the signification or karkas, shtira or shara, whatever they are, of the babas, the grahas, and the rashis. Okay? So what are the shtira karkas of Venus? Besides the obvious things, right? You know, what does parashara say about that? If you want to learn astrology, the first thing you got to do is get Birihat Parashara Hora Shastra and start reading chapter three on the Grahas, because that's going to be like, wow, I know my ABCs and I can write and spell. So what does he say about, you know, Venus? He says, I'm paraphrasing, 
in English <laughs> that he's charming or she is charming, that she has a splendorous physique and excellent disposition. So in a way, Venus is a very beautiful graha. And it is because in essence, uh, Venus is beauty, right? Venus is relaxation. Venus is luxury. Venus is pleasure. He also says that uh, Venus has charming eyes. And what happens when a person has charming eyes in life, right? She or he is beautiful. He's appealing. He's charismatic. So in a way, Venus is very handsome. is very beautiful. And Parashara also says he is a poet. So he is very um, able in the arts also. And he also mentions that he's kapha and bata. And besides that, he says she has curly hair. So in a way, Venus is a very beautiful planet, very artistic planet. He's kapha, so he's able to put up the basis, uh, the, you know, the, the basic things in, in something in order for other things to be constructed upon that. And he's bata also, so he's able to transport or uh, move things from one place to another, or uh, to provide movement of many kinds. And he also has curly hair. What is hair? Hair is the frame of, of the face. So it's just a beautiful frame. It's curly. It's not straight. It's not um, uh, bad hair like Saturn. It's basically beautiful hair to uh, add more beauty to us. And in a way, what Venus is, besides all this, is uh, the graha that helps us make decisions in life right? Venus is the planet that entails what uh, we decide is good or bad for us in terms of what enriches us or what does not enrich us, okay? It is obviously an interpersonal planet because it is a watery planet, so it deals with emotions, it deals in how we deal with other people, and in a way, it is pleasure, it is femininity, it is relaxation, beauty, art, understanding, love, luxury, and wife. And besides that, we also see in that chapter three the other significations that are very important to understand uh, Venus or Shukradeva, the Dajaguru. First of all, Venus is a Brahman, right? But it's a Rajasic Brahman, not a Sattvic Brahman like Jupiter. So we're going to see that Venus is going to be, you know, very uh, preoccupied with the things of mundane life. Uh, Venus looks sideways, so very Rajasic. He's, she's always looking sideways, not up to God, not down to the mundane things, but to the earthly activities of humane activities. Obviously, it is a female graha, it is a natural benefic or a gentle planet. And what's the difference between benefics and malefics? Well, benefics keep the bad and share the good. Malefics keep the good and share the bad. But that's just a, a general explanation, okay? And uh, besides that, you know, in the planetary cabinet metaphor, Venus is the mundane counselor of the king's son, or Surya Deva. Basically, what Venus does is that he tells the king, look, you got to do this because people are going to like this culturally, so you got to do that. Oh, king, don't do that because that might seem, you know, inappropriate. So in a way, he's the public relations officer. You know, he is uh, the person who's in charge of the gossip columns. He's the person in charge of, of what the people like, what the people don't like. So in a way, that is Venus. And where is Venus right now? Venus is in Tula Rashi, direct. So it's going forward. So uh, right now it's in the first 15 degrees of Tula Rashi and that is the Mula Tricona or uh, the second uh, best position for Venus after uh, Pisces uh, in a chart. So uh, here in Venus, uh, I mean in Libra, Venus is going to be fabulous. And not only in the first 15 degrees, in the second 15 degrees, he, uh, she uh, the Shukradeva achieves uh, Swakshetra. So uh, we're going to have a very good transit in principle. So once we have discussed what this means, how can we approach that transit to our lives? So we got to be discussing here. What are we discussing? Are we discussing mundane astrology? Are we discussing uh, electional Muhurta astrology? Are we discussing natal astrology? Or are we discussing Prashina horary astrology or magical astrology? Obviously, we're not discussing horary astrology because you're not asking me a question right now. Although if people are doing Prashina these days and they ask about a wife or something, probably, you know, the omens for a good answer is going to be there because Venus is in Lyra. So in mundane astrology, I mean, we could uh, relate this transit to the things that happen internationally, globally, collectively, which is 
mundane astrology. But in a way, mundane astrology is basically done with slow moving planets, right? A fast moving planet like a Venus, Mercury, and even the moon and sun, you know, they can relate to specific, you know, uh, details. But in a way, it's better to do it with slow moving planets because, you know, things don't happen just in, in one day or one week. Things happen in years, right? Uh, international club conflicts and, and that sort of thing. It can also relate to, you know, atmospheric events like earthquake and volcano eruptions, but that has to do more with slow moving planets. So we've uh, eliminated Prashna, we've eliminated uh, mundane astrology. Electional astrology, Muhurtas, well, if you're going to do something related to uh, Venus uh, affairs, then it's probably a good time to do them because Venus is in good dignity. So if you're going to do a muhurta uh, to uh, go to a spa, then probably we're going to have good dispositions in principle. If you want to meet someone, a special lady friend, then probably we're going to have good disposition in muhurta. And obviously in magical astrology, if you want to do a talisman related to Venus, then it is a good time. So now we are left with natal or hora astrology. How is this going to relate to you? Well, this transit is going to be, you know, um, special or more relevant to people who are going through Venus Mahadasha, Venus Antardasha, or Venus Pratyantardasha. It's also going to be important to people who are going to be 25 years old, because that's the age when Shukra Deva matures, and obviously for people who have special points in uh, Libra, uh, lords of houses, um, cusps, if you, if you use cusps, uh, um, lots, if you use lots, uh, and obviously where Venus is touching, that's gonna have a special effect. So here we see how we can translate this uh, collective event transit into a more specific thing that is our natal chart, our natal astrology. So if Venus applies, or you're going through the significators I just mentioned, uh, the time periods, the special points, or 25 years of age, this transit is going to be significant. Why? Because there's a confluence, as we said before. You're going through Venus things right now, and Venus is transiting over those things, okay? And how do we know if a transit is good or bad in our natal chart? There is one technique that's very good that often is not mentioned that much in these transit videos, which is Ashtaka Varga, obviously. You know, what are the Bindus for your Venus in Libra? As simple as that, man. You know, a lot of people never talk about Ashtaka Varga for transit videos. They never talk about how transits are secondary to time periods. And this is how we do astrology. You know, this is how we do natal astrology responsibly. We take the chart, we see what's happening, we do the Ashtaka Varga, and then intuition comes in, right? That comes with spiritual practice, purification, and all that. So how many Bindus does your Venus in Libra have? From zero to, to two, that's not that good. But don't worry, it depends on which houses Venus rules in your chart, and it also depends on the Mahadasha time period you're going, right? Uh, from uh, four uh, to, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. From four to six, it's more or less average, right? No, I'm sorry, from zero to two, <laughs> it's bad. There we go. Zero, one, two is bad. Three, four, five is average, and six, seven, eight is very good. So, if you're going through a time period of Venus, if you're 25 years old, if you have something important, sensitive points in uh, Libra, and if Libra rules important things in your chart and you have high Bindus, then this transit is going to be good. Now, how many people does this apply? Not a lot. So that's the thing, you know, you got to be very selective with these transits because the reality is that although transits affect us, all collectively, they affect us all, all, of, all of us individually in a very heterogeneous way, in a very different way. So in a way, this is how we can dissect this question of how this Venus Direct is going to affect us, right? Let's see our chart. Let's see when we are. Let's see what Venus does in that chart. Let's see what other planets are doing in relation to that chart. Let's see what time we are. Let's see the Ashtaka Varga, and then we make a responsible prediction. So in a way, in these transit videos, we have to explain this all the time because it is not responsible for us to say that this transit is gonna be horrible and this and that, 
Oh, and we can also, uh, and on the other hand, we can't say that this trend is going to be fabulous and we're going to be rich and we're going to, because that's not the way it usually happens. It might happen to some people, specifically to people who apply all these specifications I just said before. But, you know, with transits, we got to be very um, studious about them. We have to go through the works. We got to go through that Saturnian repetition of hard work to understand astrology through these videos, through our readings, through our spiritual practices, to really understand how these transits are going to affect us. Obviously, Venus is in a very good dignity in principle. So we can expect Venusian things to express themselves, obviously depending on our chart. Luxuries, pleasures, femininity, you know, um, richness, enriching our body, enriching ourselves with the good things we like. So in essence, you know, let's do these things in a specific way rather than in a general, uh, more um, show business type of way when these uh, transit videos occur. And I always say the same things when they bring me on for to discuss transit, but that's that, that those are my two cents on the topic. So thank you, Babaji. Yes, regarding this, I had also made a video in that I said that yeah, but that point is very important. Before that, I would say that this dashas will ultimately say what is going to happen because that's specific for every person in this earth because no no two person will run the same dasha. I mean, they may run the same maha dasha or antar dasha or even pratyantar, but if you go down to the minor levels, there will still be differences in sukshma. Definitely. Yes, and then we have to see... Uh, where where that dasha planet is transiting in the in the transit so especially i have seen that uh, especially uh, now when mars was retrograde and it was exalted in capricorn so then i had seen that the scorpio and aries ascendants they during the time when mars was actually direct and retrograde which was the first two months and then the last two months because in between two months, it went right to it. So in the first two and in the last two months, they had done some things which they've not done in so many, many, many years. Or maybe if they're in 20s, or maybe they have not done in this life only. Now, why that happened? Because Mars was their Lagnesh, Lagna Lord, which is their, their thinking, their intelligence. Like one of my friends I know is an Aries Lagna. And he was in a city and he during the first two months when mars was uh, and mars entered capricorn he had done so much my god he had attended this conference that conference because now why he was attending conferences related to finances and career because that was happening in his 10th house for aries capricorn is the 10th house yep. so that intelligence is going towards the 10th house and because it is exalted he's feeling very happy doing it. He's feeling that this is exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Aries Lagna is a tricky Lagna because there uh, Mars rules the first and the eighth. And if he is conjunct a good planet for an Aries Lagna, which would be Jupiter or Sun, then he's going to be, you know, more disposed to good things. But if he is conjunct with, you know, a negative planet in Aries Lagna, which would be Saturn and, um, which would be uh, and Mercury and even and even yes. Venus, which is a Maraca word, then things are going to be bad. And Parashar talks about that, how that Latin is a bit tricky. So it would be interesting to see that if your friend uh, with uh, what planet Mars is associated within his. I I wanted to say regarding that the next thing that Mars is also his eighth lord, right? Yeah. So as you said, so then eighth lord is transiting the tenth house. The, it, it is the Lagna Lord, but it is also the Eighth Lord. So that that flavor will also come. Now he has changed his career altogether. <laughs> ah, that's yeah, nice. And, yeah, he has changed his career and now he's into something else. But that that's how we see, you know, uh, you have to see. So now, for example, Venus is in Multricone in Libra till 15 degrees, till the time it reaches. So uh, you will see whichever houses Venus is ruling in the chart or... To be more precise, just check where Libra is. Those houses, those houses, you will see that now you can naturally function pretty well in them. Regarding those houses, suppose Venus is ruling your fourth house, 
so things related to education or mother or home anything like that and venus just went combust also and jupiter is combust i think now i mean around this time i guess now so whenever a planet is come because see, whenever the venus is getting retrograde it will always get combust <laughs> otherwise it can't happen so that time uh, a new cycle begins actually when the retrogression is there because sun is like the charging power so it's like saying that uh, there's this beautiful thing which they say now it's like the sun saps away the the example is given in the scriptures that the sun is so powerful it can uh, suck away the urine from a place and it 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 can not it can stay without getting contaminated mm. uh, if we go and touch urine we get contaminated so we go and wash our hands and legs we take bath sometimes but the sun can dry the urine <laughs> and the sun doesn't get contaminated you see so that's what the sun does sun sucks away all the negativity and whatever is there which which we were doing but which is not in the higher interest of our uh, planet like venus for example when that whichever planet is getting combust and then we uh, we take a fresh new beginning we see that planet very freshly so then we say the new beginnings happen that is why we say that when a planet gets retrograde there are new beginnings because and especially for mercury venus when they are retrograde it will always get combust so then the new beginning happens and the, another thing i would like to say is uh october 5th venus had gone retrograde i guess this year so yes. yeah o- october 5th so we can we can take a note of that day october 5th where uh, libra is falling and now because venus is in their own house i mean so the lordship and the placement is the same now <laughs> but for mars and capricorn it was different it was ruling one house and it was transiting in another house so it's like the lagnesh was going to the 10th house but now whichever house venus libra is falling it the planet itself is there so we can take a note uh, what happened during uh, 5th of october now again as you said that depending on dashas and other things and we can also take a note that when venus crosses that degree that day what happens exactly that uh, i mean in the in the degree which venus was retrograde which was on october 5th and you can check uh, when venus is crossing now in that degree what is happening so then you will be able to understand during these days around one month two months what actually you did and i'm i'm very sure i mean whichever house libra is there's something which you are definitely uh which which definitely has changed and you have started doing it again or you have had a new outlook and it can also happen that during retrograde times you applied a certain technique but you realize it's not working yeah yeah it's it's the beginning of an event that you have to revisit or rework which that's what retrogression means it's going back yes. right it's yeah. the idea of you are uh, reevaluating what you've done you have to go back and redo sometimes and this is basically what you've said it can uh, represent the beginning of an event and it goes back and you review and then you go forward and you go back to that point where it was retrograde stationary and now uh, 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 direct so now you have to reevaluate what you've done this this give good results um, and in a way you can see also the confluence so if you are happy doing that and venus is a functional benefic and you are in a time period of venus and the uh, ashtakavarga is good then it's going to be a very very uh, memorable experience right but if the significators are negative uh if venus rules negative houses in your chart dushtanas maybe um if you are going through a difficult venus period in relation to malefics in your chart or rahu maybe you know uh although that can express on on relationship but we're not going to get into that let's uh pick another one uh, you know um, a function of malefic and then you have a bad venus in your ashtakavarga right? then that's going to be a negative experience in many ways or at least the result is going to be difficult right and uh, and uh, i always say to everybody that during venus times people say when venus gets retrograde people say that they they break up with their partners yes but i always tell them you do not break up during venus retrograde 
you just know that you have to break up now. <laughs> in a way, you know, when Venus gets retrograde, which it no longer is, by the way, it's direct now, um, as we record this video, the idea is that, you know, relationships get tested, right? Yes. Uh, because Venus is uh, understanding. It is diplomacy. It is one of the counselors in the, in the planetary cabinet. So during Venus retrograde, you might be, some relationships in your life are going to go through trials and tribulations. So... My experience is that if you break up, then you break up. But if you go through that trial and tribulation and you get out of it, the relationship is going to be stronger, right? Uh, it also depends on dignity, depends on other factors, but it's a time of testing, right? Testing what you do with your wife, with your girlfriend, what you do with your friends, uh, what, what you do with the significators, the Shara significators of Venus in your chart specifically. So... It is a time of going back to our relationships, to analyze them, to analyze the things that give us pleasure in life, which are usually our, our partners, romantic partners, uh, to go back and see what we uh, do in our life to enrich us, right? What we do to feel good. And that's what Venus um, invites you to do when it's retrograde. Now that it's direct, you're probably going to say, like you say, Babaji, the idea of, wow, you know, this thing happened because it needed to happen. Or I had to go through these uh, situations in order to understand the value of things, which is what Venus does in terms of interpersonal relationships or other types of Venus-related things. Yeah, and I always say that during Venus retrograde, and I don't mean to offend anybody here personally. No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so during Venus retrograde, only those people break up or those relationships fade out. It is, it's not romantic relationship. It, it can be any relationship. Yes. Which, which we and or the other person was pretending that it's a great relationship, which doesn't have any base. So now when there is a, a challenge, so either we or that other person is not willing to work. Then we or that other person has to show, show the door, you know, oh, look, my expectations are not getting fulfilled. And your expectations are not getting fulfilled because see, many people don't know the difference between moon and Venus. They think, oh, both are, you know, emotions, love, blah, blah, blah. These Different. Are but moon is a sattvic planet. Correct. The mother, the mother is more 99 or hundred percent of the times when the child is there, the mother is not thinking that if I take care of the child, what will he or she give me in return? The other mother never thinks. But Venus is not that kind of a planet. Venus yeah. owns Libra. Venus is like, okay, I do this. What do you do for me? <laughs> Definitely. And, and I mean, one is Sattvic, one is Rajasic, yes, one is the queen, Rajasic. one is a counselor. There are two different types of, of animal. I mean, of, of Graha in this, in this case. You know, there are two different types because they both deal with water. So they both deal with emotions in many ways. Yes. They both deal with relationships. But one is Sattvic. And the other is not. You know, Venus is the Daija Guru. <laughs> I mean, Venus is a doorway to many things because he is a Rajasic Brahman, right? Yes. You know, he's a Rajasic Brahman. He is going to go through to things that the moon might never have to do because she's static. She's just being, right? Uh, uh, here, uh, although she is the queen, right? She is a a a a, a Vaishya in the planetary scheme, right? She is a Sattic Vaishya, so she is like an il illuminated uh, person who does business. So she is uh, more worried about the things that go on in the kingdom from a motherly perspective. She might sacrifice herself to help people. Not Venus. Venus is more Rajasic, and she's more. Um, worry about what the king wants, what the king wants to hear. So in a way, Venus and, and the moon, you know, they are good in conjunction for Janini principles, but in Parashra principles, they might create difficulties sometimes, especially in relationships. That can create a person who's too needy, right? A person who identifies his individual consciousness with relationships and we cannot do that because if we do that we're going to be let down right because we have to love ourselves in order to love other people and our love for other people do not uh, define our individual consciousness so yeah. i i have an opinion in this venus moon conjunction as you said as per sure. parashara 
what i have seen is <laughs> this is this bit funny and i hate to say this but what i have seen with my friends and my experience with other people that if somebody has this uh, 